Oh uh, yeah, can I have a hot tea? Uh, which one? Uh, hot, the hottest one. Just any okay. of the. Hot... Uh, you want black, green tea? Green is fine. All right. Thank you. My security guard we were talking about, he's from out here. We were talking about getting me out to see LA for real, because I spent a lot of time just at the studio. I look out the window and see how big it is. I haven't experienced the bulk of it. It's a work thing for me coming out here. Atlanta molded me so much, seeing different artist processes, the work ethic behind it, a lot of them out there. There's a lot of go, 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 cook, cook, cook. Like, let's record, record, record. Atlanta taught me how to punch, for example, how to freestyle in the booth, as opposed to sit down and write and be calculated. Being in Atlanta taught me to go off the cuff, feel it out. I hear it's a little, let's take our time, let's think about it, you know, let's be conceptual. Still feel most at home in Kentucky. You know, not everybody likes where they grow up or associated positively. A lot of people are trying to escape where they're from. Me, um, I had a positive experience in Louisville. The most southern thing about me, maybe my soul. People out here, when we meet, there's there's a warmth and there's a comfort we can share that they feel from me. You know, this is at least that's what they describe to me. It's, it's a comfort. I don't attach myself to items that much. Girls try to give me little stones to carry in my backpack to protect me. Maybe they're helping. 2020, probably the year I'm gonna look back on as my life changed. Well, I, I had the privilege of growing into my fame. It didn't happen overnight for me. I mean, to me, it started in elementary school. I was just always popular in my classes. I was the it girl, man. I was the it girl. I was able to adjust, ease into it. The sense of awareness I had to have in my city, it just extended to a national level of, if I walk out this door, someone might immediately recognize me and want something from me. It's one of the reasons I have reservations about doing this with y'all. I don't want you to know what my 24 hours are like. I don't want you to see the inside of my room. I don't want you to see, I want that for me. I don't want you to know who I'm dating. I don't want you to know this and that. I want something for me, because if you do enough, they'll take it all from you. It's all for them if you give them enough. So that's one thing I've learned is cut off some access. But with that being said, I'm excited to be here. He's been, he been here the whole time. Yeah, it's Urban. Urban Wyatt is my best friend and photographer. Shot every project cover I put out. Grew up in the same neighborhood. Started working at Chick-fil-A together in Atlanta. So I was making what are the shits called? Spicy, spicy, deluxes. spicy deluxes in the kitchen in Chick-fil-A. Butter in the biscuits in an assembly line. And then at night, chasing my dreams. We just wanted this bad and for some reason, there was no point on this journey where it felt like there was a moment of, we might not get it. I can't explain why. It always felt like a sure thing, no matter how far away it was. It just felt like a sure thing. You know, people want to talk about God and Jesus. That's fine. Manifestation? That's what I'm really sold. That shit's real. Can I have your attention, please? Funny story, right? About two years ago, we was on the same stage, but it was kind of dead. Hardly a crowd. But you know what? I had a feeling things were gonna change. Are you ready for Jack Harlow? Make some noise, let me hear you. Well, mentally, I've been preparing for this tour for a year and a half, but now it's it's coming closer and it's time. To be a touring artist is like, it's the biggest privilege. You get to see the world. You're getting paid to see the world. You get to do it with your friends. You get to perform the music you made and there's a room of people that want to sing along to it with you. It's paradise. It's a dream job. My anxiety for shows was always rooted in, is the room going to be packed? You know, I have like a fear of, doing empty shows because I did so many. I know what that feels like. So now that I have a tour that's sold out before I take off on it, it's all I ever want. 
Well, you know, the last tour we went on, I was at a level where some of the venues were simply bars. And so it's just about plugging the DJ system in, getting the mic, getting in and get out. I'm a bigger star now, and we want to match that. We want to become known for our live show. Damn right, you want to be in this scene. She had the videos trying to be in this scene. Used to fantasize about being this scene. Bluegrass girl, but she got big dreams. Can't touch me, I got instincts. Locked in the house, but I'm plotting things. I brought a gang to the party with me. One, two, three, let's go, gang. Fuck with y'all, Fuck everything if you don't already know my name is jack harlow i spent a lot of the beginning of my career in this really calculated space really thoughtful about what i was doing and as i grew older I developed this kind of taste for being off the cuff, freestyling more, having fun with it, putting less thought into it. And now I'm in a space where I can blend being calculated and kind of just dancing with it. The production has to be of a certain standard. I'm trying not to pick beats to sound like other beats. One of one is our mission right now, one of one. Kanye West, college dropout, late registration, graduation. That window for me, the song making he was doing, how every beat had an identity, how every song had a story. That's who I draw a lot of my inspiration from. There is something exciting about injecting your taste into your music, you know, as opposed to just picking what the world likes. Like, let me give you a little bit of who I am. And that's how you get something one of one. And that's how you leave something behind that can inspire someone else. You know, I'm really curating the process this time, this time around. I'm more hands-on than ever. You know, I think in a way I could say I'm producing a little bit. I'm not putting my hands on the keys, but you know, on first instinct when something's attractive to the ear. So I jump as soon as I hear something I like. Well, one thing I think I inherited from my father is he doesn't like anything erratic. He'll play Sade, he'll play Al Green, he'll play a lot of smooth country music. And then my mom, she just put me on to rap, and she liked a lot of rappers that had bravado and personality. She played Eminem growing up, she played Kanye West growing up, she played Outkast. And so that gave me the interest in being, you know, a technician on the mic, using my words to express myself, saying something that makes people feel confident inside. There's so much self-doubt involved in this process. There's so many days a week where you have to look in the mirror and question, am I really that? I'm coming in contact with the idols I grew up loving and listening to and they're telling me I have it. And hearing that and getting that validation charges you up. Sometimes all it takes is someone to tell you you are who you think you are. Hungry. Hungrier than I've ever been. I feel good about that. <laughs>